All right, welcome to this lesson on graphs with functions. And this is just kind of helping to identify the different parts of a graph and the different things we can see on the graph of a function. It turns out we can see lots of things. <laughs> We're going to go through these one at a time and kind of talk about what they are and what the answer would be for this particular graph, um, which is a bit off because I drew it by hand on a computer. <laughs> but um, we'll do the best we can. So. Um, First question, find the domain of the function. Now remember, domain are the possible x values, or the x values that are represented. Now notice this graph, one important thing is at each end of the graph, it ends with a point rather than an arrow. So that means that our graph does not go on forever. It stops at each end, which is important when we talk about our domain. That means that our smallest x value the furthest we go to the left is negative 6, and our largest x value, the furthest we go to the right, is 3. So our domain is only from negative 6 to positive 3. I'm going to be writing all of these in interval notation. Okay, now the way you would normally see that, or the way you're probably used to seeing it, if we wrote the domain, would be like this. x is greater than or equal to negative 6 and less than or equal to 3. In interval notation, it looks like this, from negative 6 to 3. Now, interval notation takes a lot less room to write, um, but it is a bit confusing when you first get started because to some people that looks like a point. But it's the interval starting at negative 6 and going to 3. The square brackets tell me that I include negative 6 and include 3. The next question asks for our range. Now, the range is your possible y value. So what is our lowest y value? to our highest y value. So again, if I look at this graph, here's the lowest that it gets, and here's the highest that it gets. So its lowest y value, it appears, is at negative 4 down here, and its largest y value is up here at 5. So the range is from negative 4 to positive 5. Again, I'm going to write my answer in interval notation just because uh, that happens a lot in this course, so you'll need to learn to be familiar with it. So there we go. Negative 4 to positive 5 is my range. What is the maximum for the function? What's the highest it gets to? Now notice it didn't say what's the maximum point. It just said what's the maximum. And so what, that's, what's the largest result or the largest y? And the largest y was up here at this point. The y for that point was 5. So the maximum for this graph is 5. The next one asks, what's the minimum for the function shown? So where's our lowest point? Here it is right here. And the y for that point was negative 4. So the minimum for our graph is negative 4. Find the y-intercepts for the function. A y-intercept. It's a place where it crosses the y-axis, which is the vertical axis. The only point where it crosses that is at 0, 0. So the y-intercept is the point 0, 0. Now this, notice, written with a comma, but now they're asking for y-intercepts are actual points, so that is a point, 0, 0. Find the x-intercept. The x-intercepts are the places the graph crosses the x-axis, or the horizontal axis. So it looks like here is one, two, three x-intercepts. Looks like the first one was at negative 5, 0. The second one was at negative 3, 0. And the final was at 0, 0. So we've listed our y and our x-intercepts. The next one can be a bit confusing because of just the way it's written, the notation. It's in function notation. It says to find f of 1. Now remember, every point on a graph, you're used to the, the points being labeled x, comma, y. But remember in function notation, instead of putting y, we put f of x. So every point is x and f of x, the result after you plug that into the function. Okay. So to find f of negative 1, okay, we want to know when x is negative 1, what is the y value? So we go to the point on the graph. Here is where x is negative 1. So there is our point. 
what is the y value of that point? Okay, this is the point negative 1, negative 2. So our x is negative 1, our f of negative 1 gives us negative 2. Okay, so our answer to that would be negative 2. The next question says determine the number of solutions for f of x equals 1. So it wants to know how many times on this graph do you have the point something, comma, 1? Because remember, our f of x is our y value. The easiest way to do that is to just go to the graph and where y is 1, just draw a horizontal line and count how many times it crosses there. So at this point, the y value is 1, and at this point, the y value is 1 also. So that gives us two places where that happens. So the answer to that would be 2. And finally, they ask, determine whether the function is odd, even, or neither. Odd and even talks about symmetry. Um, an odd function is symmetric with respect to the origin. And I'll give you an example of that. This graph here that I'm drawing would be symmetric with respect to the origin. Um, one side goes up, the other side goes down, and it seems to kind of be centered at zero. Functions that are even are symmetric or fold evenly over the y-axis. So, for example, this function here that I'm drawing would be, symmet would be even. It's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Anything else is neither. This is neither. Okay? Notice it doesn't seem to have any kind of symmetry at all. There's nowhere. I could kind of fold that graph and have two pieces that kind of look the same. Okay, so that one is neither. Hey, we're going to work with exactly the same graph. We're just going to answer some more questions. Okay, there's lots of things, like I said, to tell about a graph. Um, the first one here says identify all local minimums of the function. Now, a local minimum is the lowest point some, somewhere on the graph. So that means that the points all around it are higher than it is. Notice local, you know, we have local, we have state, we have national. Local means right here around you, okay? So where are the low points on the graph? Well, this seems to be a low point on the graph. It hits low and goes up. And this seems to be a low point. Okay, now a, a point of confusion is that this point over here on the left is not actually a local minimum. And the reason for that is because it doesn't have points to the left of it. If the graph looks like this, continue it, okay, if it went up to the left, and this would be a local minimum. It is a minimum point, but it is not a local minimum for the graph. So it would not be one of our answers here. The only local minimum we have for this graph is the point right here. Notice it's lower than all of the other points around it. Okay, it goes up on either side. So our only local minimum is, we want to go ahead and name that point, the point negative 1, negative 2. Okay. The next one asks for local maximum. Okay. Local maximums are high points on the graph. It looks like we have one here and one here. You want to double check and make sure, notice this does go down on either side of it, and this does go down on either side of it. It doesn't have kind of an empty place. So they are both local maximums. So to name them, we just say what points those are. And it appears this one is the point two, five, and this one is the point negative four, three. Okay, so those are our two local maximums. I'm going to write those down. Give me a second. Negative four, three. All right, the next question asks, Identify all intervals for which the function is increasing. Increasing intervals are where the graph is heading upward or has a positive slope. So as you're going from left to right, where is the graph going upward? Well, it looks like from here to here, notice that is a positive slope. There's one interval of increasing, okay? So that is the 
from, and when you name intervals, you talk about from which x values. So from when x is negative 6 to when x is negative 4, the graph is increasing. And again, this is going to look like a point, but it's just interval notation. Okay, there's one interval from negative 6 to negative 4. Is there anywhere else on the graph where it appears a positive slope? There is, but from here to here, it's going upward again. And that's from when x is negative 1 to when x is 2. So the interval from negative 1 to 2 is also an increasing interval. So there's two intervals of the graph where it's increasing, from where x is negative 6 to where x is negative 4, and from where x is negative 1 to where x is positive 2. Okay? Next, we're asked, what are intervals where the function is decreasing? So this would be places on the graph where it's going downward or has a negative slope. So it just looks like it happens between our intervals of increasing. So starting at negative 4 and ending at negative 1, notice that section of the graph is going downward. So that's one interval where it's decreasing from negative 4 to negative 1 is our first interval of decreasing. And are there any more? Um, it looks like, yes, on the end here, notice it's going downward. So from when x is 2 to when x is 3, it's also decreasing. Now, notice that's not the point 2, 3. It's the interval from where x is 2 to where x is 3. So those are our intervals of increasing, intervals of decreasing. Uh, part E has another thing that we're going to see a lot. Find the zeros of the function. Now, the zeros are similar to x-intercepts. It's the places for the graph or the, where f of x equals zero, or places on the x-axis. Now, these are not points. They're just the values where that happens. So we would just say the zeros are at negative 5, at negative 3, and at zero. And finally, we're asked, find where f of x is greater than or equal to zero. Now recall f of x, you just want to, if you get confused, f of x is the same as y. Okay, so where on this graph is y greater than or equal to zero? Well, this section, okay, anything above the x-axis is going to be a positive y. So this, these two sections. What are the x values in those two sections? Well, the first one that's over on the left starts at negative 5 and ends at negative 3. I'm going to put square brackets because it said or equal to 0. And then it happens again it's above the x-axis from 0 to 3. Okay, so again, we're listing the x values where it occurs. Not just at 0 and 3, but the interval between 0 and 3. And our finally, the add asks when is f of x less than or equal to 0? So where are the y values less than 0? That would be here at the beginning until we get to negative 5. So from negative 6 to negative 5, it's less than 0. And then again, it occurs here from negative 3 to 0. And then it pops back up. So from negative 3 to 0. Okay. So this is one example with all of those different things that we can determine from a function. I'm going to go through one more example, and we're going to identify all of those same things. Okay, so again, we start out, here's a new function.